Okay, so we got our barrel torqued on. Uh, don't mind the tape, that just helps grip it in the vise. Um, but we got this torqued to approximately 100 foot-pounds. Um, and then I made an index mark on the, bo on the bottom there. Uh, so I know where the barrel needs to end up. So the next step in these Winchesters, the bolt has this big old claw extractor on it. And so the breech of the barrel needs to be cut out to accommodate that. Because without the cut, there's no space for the bolt to close. <clears throat> so the way I do this is I have a ground piece of steel with like a wedge ground into it. And that will allow me to make marks. So I'll basically feed this into the action on the bottom rail. And then give it a little tap and that'll make a little transfer mark on the breech. One there, then I'll flip it up, get the top. It's be easier to do upside down. hit the bar this time. Okay. <clears throat> and then it makes little dents in there. That's another reason I polish the breach really well because the marks show up better. And then one more on the left side just to kind of make sure everything's level. So we'll have to unscrew the barrel again, so I gotta get that back in the vise. Um, so we'll be back, show you that. All right, got the barrel back off. Uh, the next thing to do is figure out how deep we need that cut to be. So we're gonna measure from the face here to the extractor claw, the highest point on that. 563. Five sixty three, I think. Yep. All right, five sixty three. So, got a little calculating to do. So, I'll record five sixty three. Okay, so formula for this is thread extension minus the measurement we just took. I think it's seven. 35, yep, 735 minus 563 plus 220. 192 is going to be our depth. 192? 192. All right, so we got our depth. The only other thing is just check width, how wide we need this guy, 390, so we're gonna need to make it about 400 thousandths, 410 maybe, that gives us 10 thousandths per side, just clearance on the edge of the uh, of that extractor there. Um, one, just for clearance's sake, uh, if the debris gets in the breach or whatever, and uh, two, the uh, barrel needs to index under torque, so, I've got my marks and everything, but I want to make sure there's a little clearance so when that barrel goes all the way on, it lines up with uh, with that cut, right? So uh, I've got to set the milling machine up real quick. Uh, I've got some tooling in there for another job, so i got to clear that out and get the barrel installed, and then we'll be back and show you that cut. So for that cut, <clears throat> I'm going to use something called a key seat cutter. So it literally just cuts this giant slot into material. And it works real well for these Winchester 70s, <clears throat> Springfields and everything. So that's a half inch diameter. I think I got a half inch in there already. Yes. 
Okay, got the milling machine set up, the cutter installed. So I'm just gonna take a real light pass and make sure we're between the lines on the breach. And everything is behaving. Touch off right there. Zero my Y or X, I'm sorry. I'm going to take about ten thousandths first and then see what it looks like. To cut that to depth and then raise the table up to account for that extra 20 thousandths. One ninety two, right on the money. Okay, now I'm just going to raise the table up so we can holler out that holler, so we can hog out the other twenty thousandths for the width. Now it fits. Fits, and we got some wiggle room. So, just a slot to accommodate the extractor. And that's how the bolt fits in there. Or the extractor claw of the bolt. Sorry, I'm gonna focus here. Just like that. Okay, now we just gotta retorque the action back on and verify that it works. And that will be completion of the barrel work. All right, that turned out just perfect. The bolt will close. Get in a frame here. The bolt with the extractor on it will now close. Headspace pass. I got it right back to the index mark. 
little dot there, meeting up with the line. And then, I don't know if we can get in here to see this. There. So it lines up perfectly with the bolt bore raceway there, where the extractor slides on this right side. Kind of see that cut. So that lines up perfect. Nothing's crooked. Head space is perfect. Closes on a go gauge, will not close on a go gauge with tape on it. Representing our two thousandths of an inch difference. And it sure as hell won't close on a no go gauge. Barrel is torqued. So, next step now is uh, bed the stock. So we're going to bed the stock. It's got a bedding block in it. It's a uh, Winchester stock. I don't know. Somebody else probably makes it. Uh, but it's got, it's got aluminum bedding block molded in. So there was a little bedding in there before with the old barrel. So I cut that out already so I could make sure. And these yellow lines are so I can fit the new barrel. I, that just tells me where I need to cut. Make the cuts. Um, so yeah, we'll get all this prepared and bed the stock. Um, probably won't show that. We'll get into bedding in separate videos. I really need to get this one out. Um, but yeah, the uh, accurizing of a Winchester 70 with a brand new barrel, Brux barrel. I gotta clean up this tape and stuff too, but... So, just to review, we've got the fully accurized receiver, blueprinted, um, Everything was done, the threads, the internal lug abutments, and the face, all trued 90 degrees square with the bolt bore raceway within two ten thousandths. The bolt has been sleeved. Um, there's a rear sleeve on this guy. I can't put a front sleeve on. Well, I mean, you could, but you got this collar here. So you'd really only be able to sleeve like this tiny little portion here, and that may affect. So we talked about this, and he he's fine. This is a hunting rifle. He didn't want uh, double sleeves anyway, just for reliability sake. Um, so anyway, the bolt uh, not only has a sleeve, but it has also been trued up um, completely. Yes, yeah, so you've seen the lugs and everything in the face. But all these features have been trued. Backs of the lugs, the bolt face, and the sleeve. Uh, so all the action work has been completed. Now the barrel work's completed. Oh, I didn't show the muzzle end. So the muzzle is actually threaded. Believe it or not. Um, I make a cap. You can kind of see the transition there on the crown so this this is a cap covering up half one half 28 threads um so when this is this is going to get cerakoted the same color i think this is tungsten gray so this whole barrel gets cerakoted so once it's blasted i mean you can't see the seam now or feel it <clears throat> but uh i don't want to unscrew this because i'll just break that seam but that's all been polished in uh custom caps been made from the barrel stub and then uh, blended it in real nice with the barrel. So that is a custom made thread protector cap. Um, the guy's probably gonna be using a suppressor but I'm, it just kind of adds to the overall presentation of the rifle uh, when they first get it from me. You know, if they, if they wanna spin it off right away and throw it in the trash, that's fine, that's up to them. But uh, yeah, it's theirs part of their barrel, so why not? So yeah, should be an excellent shooter. Brooks barrels are no joke.
we're going to put a group on the orange dot on his head. Yeah. We'll five see. shotter, see how tight we can get it. Absolutely. <clears throat> a little more wind on that one. Okay. Group it up. Yeah, yeah, do that. <clears throat> still blowing to the right? Huh? Is it still blowing to the right? Yeah. Yeah. A little more wind on that one. You like that one? <laughs> oh, that one was pretty tall. <laughs> one more. Huh? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy. I got rid of that elevation adjustment I made. Awesome. Super, super, super happy. <laughs> One thousand yards. We got. Uh, what do you think? Uh, that's nine and six. Excellent. We don't have a precision measuring device here for this, but uh, <laughs> I'd say that's a uh, well under one MOA. So that's the 6.5 PRC. What'd you say, Joe? It was 140. 140 grain uh, ELs, Elite Hunter. EL Elite Hunter burgers. What powder are you running? Uh, Winchester uh, HD. Winchester HD. So way back there.
So first shot was one of these two. Made a correction. And then there's a three shot group here. One, two, three. At 1,000 yards. Got a nice calm day. It's probably 50, 40, <laughs> high 40s. A little shivery out here today. But uh, a little breeze. A little breeze. Day. Beautiful day. But yeah, great day. All right, so that concludes this video of the Winchester 70 rebuild and accurizing and rebarreling. Uh, betting, obviously, as you saw through the video. Um, again, I apologize for the kind of sporadic format here. We're trying to get this uh, nailed down. Uh, it's, you know, gunsmithing and, and, and uh, getting the business rolling and everything like that. Is, it takes precedence, but uh, this is definitely something I enjoy doing. It um, helps with uh, promoting the business and everything. So uh, if you like what you see, please don't hesitate. You'll find all the information down there in the description below. Um, please, if you have a moment, could you just click on that thumbs up, uh, the like button, as they refer to it as. That really helps the uh, algorithms in the YouTube community to uh, get these videos to where they should be going. It helps promotion and all that stuff. Uh, leave a comment if, you're, if you want to criticize me and uh, call me out on something that I'm doing wrong. Absolutely. Please do. I'm always uh, curious to hear what you have to say, uh, positive or negative. That's totally fine. Uh, comments are great. Uh, that, that also helps the channel. So, uh, you know, after 10 years of, of doing this, there's always, there's always a different way to do it. So uh, if it's negative, hey, maybe it'll be positive, uh, positive criticism. If it's not, then we'll get a laugh out of it. So uh, I really appreciate that. And lastly, if you, uh, if you would be so kind to uh, subscribe, I'm going to be trying to be doing this regularly and uh, put out some content like weekly. Uh, we'll, we, we're shooting for every Sunday put out a video. So whether it be gunsmithing or uh, reviews or just being out in the field shooting or having fun or whatever it is, I uh, expect to see more content from us here at Accurate Rifles and Restoration. Thanks a lot for watching and see you on the next one.